All right, so we're going to look at the last section of Chapter 5, 5-6, which is your law of cosines. I find law of cosines easier than law of sines um, in many respects. The formula looks more complicated, but um, it's just easier to apply. You can, only, you can only use law of sines if you have the angle and the side opposite of that angle. So law of cosines comes into play when... So you might want to write this up here. Um, it's used with SSS, which means we have no angles. So if you have no angles, you can't use law of sines. So you're forced to use law of cosines. Um, and SAS, when the angle is included in between the two sides given, then you don't have the side opposite. So again, you can't use law of sines. And so the implication is... Um, when you don't have the side opposite the given angle. So as you can see, we have quite a few formulas here. We have six of them right here. We have your standard form and we have your alternative form. Uh, really, if, if I made you memorize these, this these would be the ones I would memorize right here. It's the easiest three to memorize because they all look like what? Well, what does this look like? Yeah, every one of them has Pythagoras theorem in it. And then you have minus this two, whatever these are here, multiplied together, and then the cosine of whatever angle is opposite the side you're trying to find. So these are very easy to memorize. Not that hard at all. Y'all already know uh, Pythagoras' theorem. And then if you, these are used when we're finding side lengths. But these formulas here are used when we're finding angle measures. So these are just derived from these formulas over here on the left. So if I had to memorize three formulas, these would be the three I would memorize, and then I would just solve these for the cosine of A, B, or C if needed. Now, these all say A squared, B squared, C squared. If I really want to solve for A, B, and C, what am I going to do to my final answer in order to get there? You're going to take the square root of both sides. These are all cosine A, B, and C, but I want just angle A, angle B, angle C. So once I find what the cosine of whatever angle is, how do I actually find the angle measure? The arc cosine or the inverse cosine, right? Um, so bear in mind that each, no matter which formula you use, you have an additional step that you have to take to get there. So let's look to see uh, how this works. And what's nice about law of cosines is you're not going to have that ambiguous case where you have to decide whether you have no solution, one solution, or two solutions. I will say that um, in your homework tonight, it is mixed between 5-5 and 5-6. You don't necessarily know if you're using the law of sines or the law of cosines unless they specifically state, use the law of sines to determine if there's, you know, zero, one, or two triangles. Um, but more often than not, they'll say solve the triangle, and they leave it up to you to figure out whether you have to use law of sines or law of cosines. Look to use law of sines first. If you have the side opposite a given angle, then you're going to start with law of sines. If you don't, then you start with law of cosines. If you do have law of sines and it's SSA, which is a bad word spelled backwards, you have to analyze it to see if you have zero solutions, one solution, or two. If it's law of cosines, you don't have to analyze that. However, I will say that um, sometimes with law of cosines, you will not have a triangle, and it will be obvious when you're trying to solve for one of the angles, you'll get an error message. But that's not going to happen very often. All right, so let's go ahead and sketch the triangle that they gave us. Again, I don't know. They've given me three sides. I have no idea if I have an obtuse angle or not. No clue. So this is going to be A, B, and C. And if I drew my triangle wrong, oh well. I won't let that bother me. What they have given me is that side A is 13, side B is 18, and side C is 26. I have no angles, so I cannot use the law of sines. 
So then I need to use a law of cosines and I need to decide, do I want to find angle A, B, or C first? To determine that, it is always best to start with the longest side and find the largest angle first. Always look for the longest angle first. So step one, find the longest angle. Longest? <laughs> Is that really how we describe an angle? How about the largest angle? Find the largest angle first. So what is going to be our largest angle, A, B, or C? C, because 26 is my largest side, and it is across from angle C. So since we're finding angle C, we're going to use the formula cosine of C equals. And so then I have A squared plus B squared minus C squared. All of that will be over 2 times A times B, according to the formula. And so I'm just plugging in what they gave me. So A is 13, B is 18, C is 26, and then 18 and 13 go in down below. So be really careful when you plug this into your calculator. You're going to get a very long decimal, and um, you have to be careful. If you plug this into your calculator exactly as you see it here, with no additional parentheses, you're going to get the wrong answer because your calculator is not going to know what is the numerator and what is the denominator. If you plug it in this way, it's going to think that um, you've got this squared plus this squared, and it's going to subtract the 26 squared divided by 2. And then it's going to multiply the whole thing by 13 and the whole thing by 18. So my suggestion would be to figure out what this is first, so do the numerator first, and then hit enter. So if you have a calculator, you want to take it out. There's lots of you don't have a calculator on your desk. You've got to practice using your calculator. Because part of the reason why you're getting them wrong in Math Excel is because you're not inputting them into your calculator correctly. So I would be uh, figuring out the entire numerator, then hit enter, then figure out the entire denominator using parentheses. So you'd want to put parentheses around that whole denominator when you're dividing it into your numerator. And then, um, I mean, you could put brackets around here as well. Four decimal places. Now, you're not going to round in your calculator. So on paper, we're going to round to four decimal places. So on paper, you're going to get the cosine of C is approximately equal to, but you're going to leave the whole long decimal in that calculator. And then we're going to talk about how do we use the whole long decimal. We don't want to write it on our paper, it's too long. But when you did that, what'd you get? Negative 0.3910. Very good. So we have, if you didn't get this, negative 0 0.3910, we need to chat. I need to see you and your calculator. So who did not get this? Lots of people in the last class didn't get it, so don't be afraid to say, I didn't get it. So let's see what you did. So, you didn't hit enter up here. So when you do this, you have to oh, hit enter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, okay. so do the numerator separately, hit enter, and then take that whole denominator in parentheses. So do 2 times uh, the 13 times 18, all that in parentheses after you hit enter, divide by. So try that, and you should get that. Todd, how do we do? I got it. For sure? I, I just pushed clear. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you don't want that. All right, so then uh, we really don't want cosine of C. We want angle C, right? So how do I find angle C? Yeah, that, remember that inverse cosine or arc cosine. But we're going to put in there not this right here. We're not putting this in there. We want the entire decimal that's in your calculator. So instead, how do I get this in those parentheses on my calculator? Remember? Second answer. Where is answer above? What key? Look at the... Yeah, look at your negative key. So on your keypad, look at your negative key. It says A-N-S in blue. That means you want to use your second function button. So hit, hit cosine, or I'm sorry, hit negative cosine. That'll give you your inverse cosine, and it automatically gives you the parentheses. So then hit second negative to get your answer, and it'll say A-N-S in there and those parentheses and tell me what you get. 
and round it to two places. 113.02 degrees. There you go. So there's answer one. And so we want to update our picture. Obviously, we drew our picture wrong, right? But we're not going to let that bother us. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Now, at this point, because uh, we still have two missing angles, so we have to find another missing angle, and then the third angle is easy, right? But um, now that I have a side across from an angle, I could convert to law of sines. However, I highly caution you against it. If you convert to law of sines at this point, in this particular problem, it's not going to make a difference, but in other problems, it, you can be off by a smidge um, or like three degrees. It just depends on the problem and, and how it's working. So my suggestion would be you do not convert and go back to using, whoops, go back to using the law of sines. Stay with the law of cosines. If you start with the law of cosines, stay with it. If you start, start with the law of sines, stay with it. So at this point, what's our next largest side? Uh, our next largest side is um, side B, which is 18, right? So we want to find angle B. And again, write yourself a note. Avoid reverting. I'm running out of room here. Avoid reverting to law of signs. So we're going to do the cosine of B is equal to A squared plus C squared minus B squared all over 2 times A times C. So A is 13, C is 26, and B is 18 and then the 13 and the 26 are down below again. So again, remember, you're going to do your numerator separately than your denominator. So you're going to do all of this first, hit enter, and then you're going to hit divided by all of this. So what did we get for the cosine of b? We're going to round to four places. That is correct. So then to find B, angle B is approximately equal to the inverse cosine of, even though we're writing 0 0.7707 on our paper, you're really using the entire decimal. So right here, you're using second answer so that you get the whole decimal equivalency here, not the shortened version. And... So what do we get? 39.58 degrees is correct. And so this is part three, and we are going to update our picture with that 39.58 degrees. And we only have one thing left, and it's easy, right? What do we have left? Yep. Find angle A. And angle A is equal to 180 degrees minus the sum of the two angles that we just found. So we have 39.58 and 113.02. And we're adding those together and subtracting them from the 180. So what do we get for angle A? 27.4. Correct. So 27.4. And if I did say the two places, you would want to put a zero on the end of that. And so that is part three. And update your picture. <clears throat> Not so bad, right? Your calculator gets to do a lot of the work for you. And just like law of signs, we're using inverse or arc in this case. 
All right, so then let's look at what happens if they give you two sides in an angle. So example two, um, I know that this is not law of sines. Why? What about the sides that they gave you? Yeah, I don't have side B, which would be across from angle B. So I know that this um, has got to be the included angle in between those two. This has got to be SAS, which is law of cosines. So I'm going to sketch my triangle. Again, I have no idea what it looks like, so I'm just making any old sketch. And I'm going to plug in what they've given me. So side A is 6.2. Side C is 9.5. And angle B is 75 degrees and wow, they gave me minutes. 75 degrees, 21 minutes. That brings us back a little bit, right? So at this point, it's impossible to use, if you look at the picture, the picture should tell you it's impossible to use law of sine, so it's definitely law of cosines. So the question is, how do I know what formula I should be using? Should I be finding angle A, should I be finding angle C, or should I be finding side B? So let's go up and look at the formula choices that we have. If I were to find angle A, wouldn't I have to use this formula right here? So I wouldn't know A, right? Do I know side B? No, I don't know side B. So I'd have an unknown here at A, and I'd have an unknown here at B. Can I use a formula with two unknowns? So I'm not going to be finding um, angle A, nor will I find angle C, because again, I don't know side B. So that leaves me with finding what? Side B. Do I know everything here? Do I have side A and C? And do I have angle B? So by process of elimination, I know I have to find side B because it's the only formula I can use right now. So let's move back to our problem. So that's how I determine what I'm doing for step one. So step one, find side B. So here we go, let's use our formula. B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared minus 2 times A times C times the cosine of B, which we'll know. So plug in what they gave you. A is 6.2, C is 9.5, and then again, A is 6.2, C is 9.5, and then my angle measure is 75 degrees, 21 minutes. So you're going to put this in your calculator exactly as you see it. All of this exactly as you see it. What's going to give you some issues? The degrees and the minutes. Do you remember where to find the degrees and the minutes on your calculator? Where's the menu for degrees and minutes? What buttons do you push? Second apps will get you to the angle measure. So when you go to put this in, you're going to hit cosine, then you're going to put in 75, and then you're going to hit second apps and choose the first choice, which is degrees, hit enter. And then you're going to put in the 21, hit second apps again, but choose choice number two and hit enter. And then it should look like this. Then all you have to do is hit enter a final time. And what does B squared approximately equal. We're going to round that to four decimal places. What would you get? 98 point what? 8968. And then how are we going to solve for B? How do we solve for B? Take the square root of both sides. And so B is approximately equal to, to two decimal places. 9 point what? You do it. Oh, okay, let's talk about this. So um, you want to do, in order to do this, you want to do second square root, right? And then if you want to get this entire proper decimal, because this is not the entire decimal, remember you want to get your answer in there, the previous answer. So you'll do second square root, and then once you do second negative to get the answer in there, and then hit enter. And you should get 9 point what? 9, 4. So there's piece 1. 
I'm going to update my picture. So B is equal to 9.94. We okay with that, Sam? I got a weird for the first for B squared. For B squared. Three. Let me see how you put that in your calculator. I think I did the minutes and seconds different, or the minutes different. So I typed it in like as. Did you type it in exactly like that, or? Uh huh. Because uh, I did thought I did. You got the weird calculator though. Yeah, but it it has a template for you to plug it in, so I just did. Oh. It's worked before. So I if I were you, then I would find the cosine of 75 degrees in 21 minutes separately and then just first, and then multiply it by the 2, by a negative 2, mm -hmm. and then times, times. the 6.2... Mm -hmm. And then times, oh, you have 9.3 instead of 9.5 on here. So that could oh, be the other okay. issue. That's probably good. Yeah. That's probably what the issue is. So see if that does it, and then we'll come back. All right, so then what do you think we're going to do for um, our second step? <coughs> right, so we want to find the longest, well, the largest angle that's left. So we do. We want to look at the next largest side. So out of side A or side C, which is the largest? Mm. Side C. So that means we're going to find angle A. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gee whiz, we're going to find angle C. How about that? So find angle C because it's going to be the next largest side. Um, at this point, remember, you could revert to law of sines because you have the angle in the side opposite. But again, I caution you not to revert to law of sines. Continue with law of cosines. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use cosine of C, since I'm finding an angle, equals A squared plus b squared minus c squared all over 2 times a times b. And so a is 6.2, b is 9.94, which I'm going to have to squeeze in there, and then c is 9.5. And so the cosine of C is approximately equal to, again, remember that you are using, you're finding the entire numerator separately from that denominator. So what do we get? What's the cosine of C equal to to four decimal places? Did we not get that far? I hear a lot of tippy typing. You should have gotten 38.3813. Did anybody not get that? That would be if I took the entire numerator 6.2 squared plus 9.94 squared minus 9.5 squared. Enter divided by parentheses 2 times 6.2 times 9.94 in parentheses. You should end up with this. And that's the rounded version. No? Let me see your calculator. took your answer here and divided it, this had to be all in parentheses. So again, it's dividing it by 2, but it's multiplying by 6.2 and 9.94, because all of that has to be in parentheses. Because you get weird parentheses in there. So if you do 6.2 squared plus 9.94 squared minus 9.5 squared, you get that 46.9936. Then divide it by 2 times 6.2 times 9.94. So 
So something in the division you're doing wrong. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, so then to find angle C, oops, angle C is approximately equal to the inverse cosine of that 0 0.3813, but you're using the whole answer. And so what do we get for angle C? 67.59 is correct. And that's in degrees. And so that is part two. And so we're going to update our picture. 67.59 degrees. So all that's left is angle A. That's easy, right? So step three, find angle A. How are we finding angle A? Bless you. Yeah, take 180 and subtract the sum of the two angles that we found. So the first one they gave to you, 75 degrees, 21 minutes. If you wanted to convert that 75 degrees, 21 minutes into its decim decimal equivalency, feel free. You can certainly do that. Um, but make sure you use the whole decimal. And then plus the 67.59 degrees. What do we get for angle A? That is correct, 37.06. And that is part three. And we're going to update our picture. Let's talk about how do we determine if our answers are reasonable. Shouldn't the smallest side be across from the smallest angle and the largest side be across from the largest angle? Yeah. All right, we've learned that in geometry. So look at your answers here. Our smallest angle is this 37.06 that we just found. Is it across from the smallest side out of all three of these? Yes, it is. And then our largest angle is the one that they gave us, 75 degrees, 21 minutes. Is this the largest side? Yes, it is. So my answer seems reasonable. That doesn't mean it's going to be exact, but it seems reasonable. All right, any issues, problems, or concerns with that? Are we good? Okay, so let's look at the uh, back page. All right, so we're going to find area of a triangle. The normal area of a triangle form is one-half base times height, but what if we don't have the height of that triangle? And we've, we've found two different ways to find the area of a triangle without knowing the height of the triangle. So the area of an oblique triangle, given that you have two sides and their included angle, meaning SAS. So if we have SAS, we can use the following area formula. It looks like it's really complicated, but in actuality, this is three formulas in one. So we have, this is the end of the first formula right here. So right here is formula one. One half times B times C times the sine of A. So in this case, B and C are your two sides, and A is the included angle. All you have to know on this, and then as you look here, you can see the rest of your formulas. This uh, cuts this into the second formula and that's the third. They're all saying the same thing. Take the two sides, multiply them together, multiply it to the sine of the included angle, and then just take half. You really don't have to focus and, and get bogged down with the fact that, well, I have A and B and whatever. If you've identified that your triangle is SAS, multiply the two sides together, multiply that by the sine of the included angle, and then just divide by two. That's it. So let's look at what they gave us down below here in example three. So I'm going to go ahead and um, kind of sketch this out based upon what they gave me. They haven't said anything about A, B, or C. If you want to put A, B, and C here to make yourself happy, you go right ahead. Um, they haven't told you which sides belong to which, but they have said that the sides of 90 meters and 52 have an included angle of 102. So if I make this side 90 meters and this side 52 meters, then this would have to be the 102 degree included angle. And so I'm not even paying attention to the formulas above other than the fact that I know that area is equal to one half times the two sides multiplied together and the sine of the included angle. So my two sides would be 90 meters and 52 meters. And my angle degree is 102 degrees. You're going to put this in your calculator nearly how you see it, but instead of one half, what should you use instead of one half? 0.5. So you're going to put in your calculator 0.5 
times 90 times 52 times the sine of 102 degrees, assuming, of course, your calculator is in degrees. And then you are going to come out and round your answer. That's really sloppy. So sorry. So I've got a Google equals. What do you get? To four, uh, to two places. Oh, okay. And then is my units of measure what? What is it? Notice here that we have meters times meters. So I purposely put the meters in there so you can see that area is always meters squared. And the reason why we're taking meters times meters. And so you uh, will get marked off because your units of measure are important. So make sure that you include that. And this does answer the question. So these are easy questions. And there's, I don't know, three, maybe four area questions in your homework tonight. They might have area mixed with, well, they might have area mixed with your, sine, your law of sines and law of cosines. What if you had a problem where you didn't have SAS? Maybe you had SSA. Could we use law of sines to get us the, ang um, to get us the angle that we want that's included and then use this formula? We could. And so you might have to use your law of sines or your law of cosines to get the piece of the puzzle that you're missing for these area formulas and then apply the area formula. Let's look at the last area formula here, which is Heron's area formula. We only use Heron as the gentleman who discovered this formula. So when you discover something in mathematics, you get to name it after yourself. So this is used when we have all three side lengths. So it's used with SSS. So again, if you have a problem where you aren't given SSS and you want to use this formula, again, maybe you have SSA and you have a choice. Well, I could use either the formula above if I have the included angle, which means I have to apply law of sines or cosines, or I could apply Heron's formula and just find the missing side. And again, you'd have to use law of sines or cosines depending upon what's reasonable. Then we can use this, but note that you have to find S this thing called S because it's in the formula four different times. So you can't apply the formula until you find what the S is. And all the S is is you take all three angles, add them together, and divide them by two. So it's possible that you'll have a nice integer in there or you could have a decimal. Yes, Sarah? The angles or the sides? The sides. Lowercase letters here are your side lengths. And to use Heron's formula, we only have side lengths. We're only going to look at side, side, side. No angles are involved in this at all. Did I say angle? I'm sorry. Bad me. You're going to add up all the sides together and divide by two. So let's look at what they gave us here. So I'm going to move this up a bit. Um, I don't know what triangle I have. Again, I, I don't even know if I have an obtuse angle just based upon the sides. That just tells me what side's the longest in my triangle. That's it. And so A side A is 43 meters. Side B is 53. Whoops, that's not side B. Side B is 53 meters. And side C is 72 meters. So obviously my triangle is not to scale, but we're not going to let that bother us. Step one is to find S. So we're going to take the sum of all three sides and divide them by two. So my side lengths would be 43 meters plus 53 meters plus 72 meters divided by two. What does that give you? It gives you 84 meters. Meters plus meters plus meters is meters. Divided by 2 still gives you meters. And so then um, part 2 is you're going to apply the formula. Now you can find the area. You're going to need some room to write down this area. So I'm going to use some space down here. Area equals the square root of. It's very long. So then let's apply. I'm going to start according to the formula with my S, which is 84 meters. And then I'm multiplying it by 84, 84 meters always comes first. 
minus my angle, or I'm sorry, my side 50, 43. So that's side A. And then times my S again, 84 meters, minus side B, which is 53 meters, times 84 meters again, minus side C, which is 72 meters. There is no need to figure out each of these differences individually. Just throw this entire thing in your calculator exactly as you see it, of course, without the M's. Just leave it long. You don't have to do intermediate calculations. And it makes it much more cumbersome if you do. You're going to round it to two places, yep. What would you get? Good. And what's your units of measure? It is meters squared. Area is always meters squared. And bear in mind that here I get meters times meters times meters times meters, which is meters to the fourth. But when we take the square root of meters to the fourth, don't we get meters squared? And so this does answer the question. And you're done. So any other issues, problems, or concerns on what we talked about today?